Welcome to my complete looks maxing guide. My name is Ali, your host for this evening. Please do make yourself a cup of coffee, grab a notepad and a pen, and let's get straight into it. Point number one, work out. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, right? Take care of your health. Get off the couch, move. You're in the office sat down for eight hours, and then you get in your car and you drive straight home. Your body doesn't go under any physical stress. You're not challenging your heart. You're just sat in the same position. Licking your fingers from all the Dorito chips that you've been eating. With a can of Red Bull on your desk. You get chest pains and you don't know why. And you look like shit. You've got a fat face. Your clothes don't fit you well. So let's start there, work out. When you work out and you take care of the way that you look and you start building some muscle and you start losing some fat, which I'll touch on later on, you look way more attractive. You can go from being a fucking four to a seven just by taking care of your body. That's a fucking excellent start. And in most cases, it doesn't cost you anything. I mean, you don't have to join the gym if you don't want to. You can do push-ups pull-ups, go for a run, that's free. And you shouldn't be cheap anyways, guys. We're not gonna be cheap bastards on this channel. I mean, for goodness sakes, 20 pounds for a gym membership? Come on now, prioritize your health. Don't neglect your health in the pursuit of wealth, because I know a lot of guys will use the excuse, nah, man, I'm grinding, I ain't got time to go gym. That says a lot about you. And I'll be honest with you, remember this, how you do anything is how you do everything, right? So if you're neglecting your health, you're not disciplined with what you eat, your business will suffer at some point as well. You'll start fucking up in your business, okay? Jim Rohn once said, everything affects everything. So let's start off with the way that you look, your body. Move, lift some heavy shit. Believe me, you'll feel fucking phenomenal. It does a lot more for you than just improve your body. It's your fucking mental health. You know, we shouldn't leave it as well until we get broken up with by a girl to go to the gym. Because that's usually when most guys take the gym seriously, when they're fucking single. When they're in a relationship, they're eating away, they get fat as fuck, they develop man boobs. Some of you guys put your girl to shame, you've got bigger boobs than her. I mean, come on, man. All right, so let's start there with working out. Number two, buy clothes that fit well. There's something that I learned a few years ago, the three Fs. Fit, fabric, and function. Let me go through them real quick with you. So fit, obviously, how it fits. Now, if you buy clothes that are extremely baggy, it won't show the hard work that you've been putting in in the gym as well. Now, I know some looks, you know, some styles suit the baggy look, right? But typically, you want to buy clothes that fit well. A well-fitted suit, not a fucking parachute, okay, that, you know, almost takes you into the air when you're walking, you know, flaps around everywhere. No, buy a suit that fits well. You don't want it to be too tight either, because then you look like an absolute idiot with a tight suit. Buy a suit that fits well. Usually you want to leave enough room in the chest area so you can button up one button. This is a, uh, a major key for you guys. When you wear a blazer, single-breasted blazer, only button the top button. Don't button both of those buttons, okay? So you've got to button the top one and leave the bottom one undone. So you want to have, you know, a well-fitted blazer and your trousers can't be too tight. I used to have a problem with trousers, okay? Normally I can sort of get my chest size pretty accurate. Most places, you know, that I try on a medium. I mean, I'm a 40-inch chest. Most places that I go to with a 40-inch, um, that sell a 40-inch blazer fit well. But then the leg area for me is a problem. Okay, so make sure that if you are going to a high street store and you're buying a suit, and I'll, I'll make separate videos on exactly which stores I would recommend and different budgets and things like that. But when you are going, make sure that you check that the trousers fit well as well as the blazer. Because sometimes they will offer to make alterations for you for free. Okay, in some cases they won't, they'll charge extra. In which case I do recommend that you invest in that because when it fits well, it's beautiful. Like I said, don't let it be too baggy and don't let it be too tight. 
In terms of fabric, obviously that, that will depend on the the season. So in the summer, you, you want to avoid cashmere wool, things like that. You want to wear linen. Okay, it's very breathable in the summer. People used to ask me all the time, Ali, why are you wearing a suit in the summer? Mate, it's not just any suit. It's a linen suit. It's breathable. Fabric is light. Okay, obviously in the winter, you want to go for thicker fabrics. And so bear that in mind. Because sometimes you're like, oh, that suit looks nice, but it's too thick for the summer. Okay, and then finally function. Function means the occasion, right? So don't wear a tuxedo, for example, day to day. A tuxedo is a bit different. It's worn in dinner parties, special occasions. It's not worn day to day. It's not a day to day suit. Okay, the whole bow tie and the whole... Uh, that's for special occasions. So be wary of that. Okay, and like I said, guys, what you want to pay attention to as well is the staple colors. So when you're buying, for example, your first suit, I would stick with navy. Navy is a very versatile color. You can wear it to an interview. You can wear it to a wedding. Black also works. Black also works. I know some people will think, oh no, but black's for funeral. No, no, it also works. But navy should be your first. Gray is another excellent versatile color. Okay, so I would recommend a navy, a gray, and a black suit as your first three suits, with navy being the first one that you buy. Okay, and navy, you can wear brown shoes with it. You can also pull off black shoes, but brown shoes are better with a navy suit. Okay, this also works with t-shirts and stuff like that. A well-fitted white t-shirt, beautiful, and women love it as well, guys. You'll notice that. And a well-fitted black t-shirt as well. Okay, with your guns coming out of it, obviously don't be too tight. Don't, don't wear one of those extremely tight t-shirts because then you look like an absolute idiot once again. You know, let it fit nice and snug, but not too tight because you don't want to get ripped shirts within a week of wearing them. Okay, let's keep it moving. Number three, pick a hairstyle that suits your face shape. Experiment. I'm in my long hair phase right now. I used to have skin fades all the time. And you know what? Skin fades... Did me well for a while, and then I, over time I just, you know, I wanted to adopt a new look. I started moving away from the skin feed, and I started to have a bit more hair on the side. And I started to do the slick back, and then obviously during COVID, I decided, fuck it, since the barbers are going to be closed, let me grow my hair. And you know what? I like it. I like it. I'll probably cut my hair short again at some point. Don't know when, but I can, you know, I can tie this up in a knot. Not in a knot, in a fucking bun if I wanted to, and not. <laughs> And um, I can leave it out. Normally I leave it out because I just, you know, it's easy, it's relaxing. Plus if I'm driving and my hair's out long, it's a lot easier to lay back on the headrest rather than have a, a bun because then you're, you're hitting the headrest and it's not comfortable, okay? Anyways, experiment. You know, figure out what your face shape is and, um, and try it. Fuck it, you know, why not? You know, if you want to give it a shot, give it a shot. Okay, so with hairstyles, you know, when you do pick a look, maintain it as well so if you're adopting a fade make sure that you go to bar the barber shop every couple of weeks or so you know or maybe every three weeks just to make sure that it remains nice and crisp okay you're going over to fade again invest in you i know some people are going to be like oh it costs money well if you can cut your own hair then do it if you can't then go to the barber okay uh, and also i put on here shave and grow a beard some guys i'll be honest don't suit a beard and some of you guys look excellent without one. You've got a nice solid bone structure, so without a beard, you look sensational. Okay, some of you, you would look better with a beard. And I would say that's probably the majority of men. You know, a lot of guys have a baby face, and so if they grow a beard out, it will make them look 10 years older in a good way. For example, if you're 21, 22, but you get mistaken for looking 17, 16, if you grow a beard, it will definitely add a few years to you but in a good way. Women will find you more attractive. You look more mature. Okay, and some of you guys are a lot older, of course, and you have that salt and pepper look going on. Women love that. Okay, you've got some white hairs in your beard. Maintain that, okay? Get the sideburns done up as well. You know, with me, for example, because I have long hair, my sideburns sometimes grow out, so I make sure that I get them trimmed so my beard looks good. Get it shaved up. Okay, get the whole nine yards. Don't spare anything. Make sure you look good, okay? Number four, invest in some good quality fragrances. Oof, I love my fragrances, what can I say? I've developed myself quite a nice collection, um, which I absolutely love. Every day in the morning, I'm like, ooh, 
which one shall I pick today? What am I feeling? And obviously it depends on what I'm wearing, but I do have my favorites. I'll make a separate video on some of my favorites, but I'll mention some right now. Uh, Bleu de Chanel, Art de Parfum is one of my favorites. Classic. I've got the 150M bottle. Um, and initially when I first started to buy expensive fragrances, I felt a bit guilty. I was like, ah, do I really need that? Maybe I can get away with a 40 pound one, but hey, you get what you pay for. I'll be honest with you guys, when it comes to fragrances, pay. The fragrances will smell like much better. Okay, the 20 pound Zara ones, if you're extremely low on money, hey, why not, go for it. But if you have a bit of money, I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference. Okay, because a lot of the cheaper fragrances don't last very long. You spray them, you get an hour, and then that's about it. It just fucking disappears and it, you don't smell of anything anymore. So high quality fragrances have a higher concentration of liquids that essentially stay on your skin a lot longer. The exact science, I don't fucking know, don't ask me about that, okay? Maybe one day I'll research more into it. I know about oud and all that sort of stuff. Um, but in general, the more premium, the better quality, the liquid in the actual fragrance, the ingredients, therefore it lasts longer. So Bleu de Chanel, Art de Parfum, obviously Dior Sauvage, I know, is a very common one, but it's a very, very good one. It's an absolute classic. And they've released a more premium version called Elixir as well, which is very good. I think that one costs 120 pounds, but you can find it off eBay, guys. This is a major key, go on eBay. Some people have received fragrances as gifts for their birthday and stuff, but they already may, they may already have one of those. And so they're selling the gift and they oftentimes sell it for 30%. 40% off his actual price. So that's a major key, okay? Uh, another one I'll give you is Dolce Gabbana, the one. Pff, beautiful, and there's different variations of that one. There's Laeli, which is uh, a more Middle Eastern vibe. And that one's better in my opinion, because it's stronger. The traditional Dolce Gabbana, the one is good, but the, what do they call it? I have a phrase for it. How long it lasts, I don't fucking know, man, but it doesn't last as long, the basic one. But it's a very, very good fragrance. I recently bought one called Initio Side Effect. Let me tell you about that one, man. It's so fucking sexy. In fact, I'm not even gonna say much. Go to your local Selfridges or Harrods or don't know what stores are in America that may potentially sell this one, if they even sell it in America. If they don't sell it in America, do whatever it takes to get it. Okay, Initio side effect, they definitely will sell it in America. It's a premium one, quite expensive, but sensational. The reason I like having quite a big collection is so that the levels go down, not equally, because you're naturally gonna go towards your favorites, and so you'll finish them first. But I don't like buying one and then just finishing that one. Obviously, it, you know, when it comes to having a signature scent, if you're just starting off, then invest in a, in a premium one, and then maybe have two other ones that you use, maybe at the office, um, on the weekends, but then your signature one you can wear whenever you want. Okay, that's your signature, okay? So hopefully that helps. Uh, number five, experiment with accessories. As you can see here, guys, I do like my rings. Now look, some people don't like rings. I like them. Um, I also like shades, I've got quite a nice collection of shades, and then, you know, when I say nice collection, they're not that expensive, some of them. Some of them I found at vintage stores for 20 quid, uh, eBay, you know, unopened gifts. So, you know, be resourceful. You don't have to go to Harrods and buy all your sunglasses from there, no. Okay, look online, you'll find some on Etsy as well, Etsy's a good website, um, for a decent price, okay? So experiment with accessories, bracelets, rings. Yeah, there's no real rule to it. You know, I don't always wear four rings. Sometimes I just wear two, but it's nice to have some rings because it just spices up your look, essentially. You know, now I can't really leave the house without at least one ring on. You know, I think it just makes the outfit have a, an extra touch to it, okay? Moving on, number six, trim your pubes and wash your goddamn ass. Wash your ass, mate. Come on now, with water. Don't just take a bit of tissue and, you know, tap it on there, no. Get some water, some H2O, and blast it at your fucking rectum. Clean that shit, okay? Because you can't be shitting and then wiping it with some tissues and then putting it on your fucking boxes and then heading out. You're gonna kill some people, mate. Be considerate of your environment. 
but also I mean when you're sitting down and you're driving for example you've got heated seats on and you're like fucking hell that stinks of shit yeah it's you it's not outside it's not the farm next to you it's you mate all right so don't you want to smell good when you're around yourself it's not just about other people when you're by yourself mate you know wash your fucking balls as well you don't, you don't want that cheesy smell lingering I mean it's crazy that we still have to mention this. I know some guys have problems down there. They may have a condition, but you know, the majority of us don't. And so, you know, don't be lazy. You finish the gym session and then you go to see your girl and she's like, fuck it now, mate. If you want your woman to be excited to go down on you, okay, and give you the best, you know what I'm saying, possible, then make sure you take care of it down there, okay? Uh, number seven, brush your teeth, floss, and use a tongue scraper. Obviously, brush your teeth once again. I hope that you are already doing that at least twice a day. Floss in between. Sometimes you get bits of chicken or whatever stuck in bits of grapes, you know, stuck in between your teeth. Flossing helps, okay, because otherwise it will stay in there and it will make an odor. And then also use a tongue scraper. A tongue scraper has been a game changer for me. Because it removes a lot of the fucking shit that just sits on your tongue. I'm not saying obsessively use it every day, but no. I mean, you have a big meal, whatever, you brush your teeth. You know, use a tongue scraper. It just clears all that shit off. I don't have a particular one to recommend. I mean, you can go on Amazon. They're dirt cheap, five pounds, six pounds, seven dollars, eight dollars for those of you in America, right? Not very expensive. So definitely take care of your oral hygiene because, you know, you don't notice it. If your breath stinks of shit, typically you're so used to it that you don't know how it impacts others. So you might be walking towards someone, you might start talking to them and they're like, fuck, you know, you see one eye twitch, that's how you know. One eye is just like, and you're like, and why are they doing that? Yeah, your breath stinks, mate. You see your mouth smells of a dead body. So wash it, clean it. You have a fat meal, garlic and all that shit, brush your teeth, mate. Mouthwash, okay, not all the time. Because I know some people have their opinions about mouthwash and how, you know, it's got stuff in there that may harm you and stuff like that. But come on, man. That's an excuse. Just fucking clean your mouth, okay? Also, if you're with a girl and your breath stinks, what's that going to communicate to her? You know what I'm saying? So clean your mouth, especially if you're about to kiss her. Imagine you're about to lean in to kiss her and you stink of fucking garlic and fish. And me, that's an instant turn off. And that could be the deal breaker for her to never see you again, okay? Let's keep this roll, let's keep this show moving. Number eight, fucking hell, mew. Breathe through your nose, not your mouth. Don't go, <gasps> breathe through your nose, mate. Once again, another reason why odors occur and stuff is you breathe through your mouth nonstop. I know some people have conditions, once again, you might have broken your nose, in which case, obviously, you will be breathing through your mouth the majority of the time if not all the time. But um, if that's not a problem for you, then breathe through your nose. And it may take consciously sitting there and actually doing it in the beginning. Because by default, if you've been breathing through your mouth for so long, you don't realize you're doing it. So you'll be sit sitting down, scrolling through your, your phone and your bottom lip will be hanging. And then you'll, you'll catch yourself breathing through your mouth. You know, like, oh shit. And you just close your mouth and start breathing through your nose. So it's going to take some conscious effort to begin with. Uh, some people even duct tape their mouth when they go to sleep at night. Which I know sounds strange, but for some people it actually works. This way you force yourself to breathe through your nose. Okay? Over time you will get better at that. Um, and then obviously it will become second nature to you. You'll just be breathing through your nose all the time. Mewing is also one of those things that helps you improve the way that your tongue sits in your mouth So your jaw isn't fucking hanging in the wrong fucking way Because if you're not if your tongue is sitting at the bottom your lower jaw protrudes out a little bit and that will Essentially distort the way your face looks and it is essentially It's not going to make you look your absolute best. So if you want to look your absolute best rest your tongue at the top of your mouth because this way your jaw is in a much better position it's much healthier for you plus your jawline will accentuate okay it will look more attractive over time
because you know if, if your your tongue is resting at the bottom it, it kind of flattens the way your jaw looks so it doesn't appear as strong and healthy as it could so mewing helps resting your tongue at the top just try it right now Rest, and notice how your jaw just kind of moves a little bit you feel it okay it will define your jaw a lot more so start mewing i'm not saying i'll have four sets of eight just just whenever you think about mewing just mew in the moment okay if you're driving you're like oh shit i'm breathing through my mouth again close your mouth rest your tongue at the top okay it will take some getting used to practice number nine your nails trim them you're not a fucking grizzly bear you don't need claws okay and women look at your hands quite a lot for them you know they have certain thoughts with what you should be doing with your hands to them okay i don't want to mention too much because youtube might flag up my video but you get the point here they look at your hands and they're like that ah, i want them to grab me with those hands i want them to with those hands you know what i'm saying fill in the blank um and so if you've got dirty nails black shit all over all under them because you know when you're when you're out there you're working maybe you work at a garage or a mechanic or even if you're just living life day to day naturally dirt will start appearing under your nails You'll scratch your fucking hair. Shit will just start getting underneath it. So trim your nails. They shouldn't be long. I've seen guys before, and fucking hell, man, it terrifies the shit out of me. With long nails, claws. I'm like, that's disgusting, mate. You've got algae under there. You've got a fucking colony of bacteria that still hasn't been discovered by scientists under your fucking nails. And imagine, just imagine. <laughs> imagine this guy just with this girl. I mean, no way, man. I can't picture that. Scratching her and shit as well. You know, he's about to grab her neck to kiss her and he fucking slices right through her fucking artery. She's out there bleeding to death. Mate, cut your nails. You don't need long nails. Sometimes I just feel like walking around with a fucking huge nail clipper and just trimming guys' nails whenever I see them in public. Okay, unacceptable. Clean them. Weekly, look at your nails. If they're appearing a bit too long, cut them. Don't chew them. Don't. You know those guys that have really weird fingers where they've got like a a huge lump of fucking flesh, and their nail was really small, and you know it just looks funny. So don't chew your nails all the way down. But you know whenever they start extending a little bit, trim them. Number ten, monitor your body fat percentage. I'm working on this right now myself. I'll be honest. Everything I'm talking about right here, I am doing already, or I aspire to do better. Okay, so body fat percentage, I'm looking to get down to the 10 to 12%. I don't wanna get into the single digit because I won't enjoy my life this way. I still like the occasional chocolate chip cookie and you know the Ben and Jerry's and all that stuff. Occasionally, from time to time, I like to indulge. And so realistically, I know I won't get down to the seven, six because I don't really need to, I'm not competing for anything. But yeah, 12, 11%, I can definitely aspire to get there through improving my nutrition. My nutrition's already good. But when I say improving my nutrition, I mean remaining in some form of a deficit from time to time to cut down on some, some fat that is uh, unwanted, essentially, okay? Body fat will impact the way your face looks as well. If you're currently 40% body fat, your face is going to look fat as fuck. So when you lose that body fat, you will look like a completely different man. Completely different. Body fat does so much for you, okay? So, you know, some of you guys right now, you've got relatively slim faces but you're 17 18 percent body fat you can definitely cut down a little bit on that body fat and your face will look a lot better and so of course will the rest of your body okay because some of you have excellent muscle mass but if you if you look skinny fat it won't really show it won't show off all of the the effort that you've been putting on uh putting into the gym as well okay so cut down the body fat percentage and you'll look a lot more shredded and you'll look a lot bigger as well Number 11, take care of your shoes. That's one of the first things women look at when they see a guy, his shoes. They look him up and down. And if your shoes have got holes in them, they're ripped, that's not a good look, is it? I mean, your shoes are something that you use every day. You go out there, you step on shit. When I mean shit, I don't mean actual shit. If you did step on some shit, buy some new shoes. Burn those fuckers, okay? <laughs> but you get the point, you go out there, you use them all the time, wear and tear. Have a few pets, loafers, trainers, change it up. Obviously, as I talked about earlier with fit, fabric and function, 
you know, you can't be going to a wedding with some trainers. You know, buy some nice dress shoes. Black if you're wearing a black suit. Brown if you're wearing a, a navy suit. Shine them, make sure they look good. Okay, they fit well. They're not fucking too long for you and you look, you look like you're walking with some clown shoes, not. Okay, so take care of your shoes and pay attention to the occasion. I like wearing loafers most of the time. They're comfortable, they look good. Yeah, that's really why I wear loafers most of the time. Obviously, when I go to the gym, I take them off, put some uh, some night trainers on. But yeah, the majority of the time, some nice some nice loafers do the job for me. Okay. Number twelve, adopt confident body language. So looks maxing. It's not just about what you purchase, you know, and, and what you do necessarily uh, in terms of um, acquiring items, but it's also how you use your body. So don't be closed off to the world with your arms crossed. Open up. It makes you look a lot more confident. When somebody is speaking to you, look them in the eyes. Don't look away. And I've talked about why a lot of guys do that. Heavy pornography consumption does that to you, makes you anxious and makes you feel like you don't deserve. You know, I've got a great way of really saying this. The reason why I believe a lot of guys, because of porn, don't look at people in the eyes, is they almost feel like that person that they're talking to can see what they've been doing. It's like that sense of shame kicks in, like damn. You look away naturally. It's like when your mum told you off when you were a kid for eating the cookies that she made for the guests. You look away, it's that look of shame. That's what porn does to you, okay? But it could just be that you're not confident because you don't meet enough people, you're always in your room. So when you are in a real life situation, you panic. Somebody speaks, you looks at you a little bit too long, you're like, oh my God, I need to look away. You're with an attractive girl on a date, she looks at you, she smiles, you look away. No. That communication, you're not confident with yourself, fellas. Okay? So adopt confident body language. Open yourself up. Okay, occupy space. Don't be afraid of that. Don't overdo it. Okay, but at the same time, don't be afraid to be animated. Use your hands as well when you speak. Don't just sit there, you know, standing in one position like a statue. Okay, express yourself with your body. Because remember, communication is both verbal and non-verbal. Okay? Number 13, own your look, embrace it, man. Some people will have things to say about you. They'll say, oh, um, you know, why have you got long hair? I got that all the time when my hair grew to this length, right? And I still get it from time to time. You know, so what's the plan with it? Why are you, Jim, what's the plan with it? I like it, that's what's the plan, okay? I like how I look, I own it. I've been told to cut it by lots of people. Just cut it, man, cut it. I don't like it, well, mate, this hair is not on your head, is it? It's on mine. If I like it, I'm keeping it. Tough luck, mate. Okay, so own your look. Some people will tell you, oh, that's a bit excessive. Why are you wearing a suit on a Tuesday? Because I want to. I, I used to get that all the time as well, and I still do. You know, I was at this gym that I just recently signed up to, a new gym, because I moved, it's, it's closer to me. And, um, you know, some of the staff in there were like, so what's the occasion? You're going to a wedding? I was like, nope, this is just me every day. They were like, what? What do you mean? I just like wearing suits. Nice, bold shirts, peak lapels. Beautiful. So some people are gonna get surprised by your sudden change or by your desire to dress well and smell good. You know, they'll be like, surely? Because for them, you know, it's out of the norm. The majority of men, in my opinion, look shit. They don't dress well. They smell average. Some of them smell like shit. So when they see someone taking care of himself, it's almost like, what? It's strange, okay? But don't be intimidated and start reverting back to your old ways because you don't want to attract too much attention. No, embrace it. And then last but not least, have a simple skincare routine. Your skin health is heavily influenced by your nutrition. I used to have terrible acne. When I say terrible, I mean it was all over my nose, forehead, chin, neck. It was terrible. Uh, and that was due to me not realizing that there was something that I was eating that was fucking up my skin. So start off there. Before you go out there and purchase a 200 pound, you know, skincare system, you know, check your diet because it's probably something that you're eating. Um, drink a lot of water, three liters a day. Okay, is a good number, good benchmark. Uh, piss out all the toxins. And then if you wanna, of course, adopt a skincare system, keep it simple. You know, don't, don't fall into the trap of having like a 25 step routine, no. It's, you know, a cleanser will do the job twice a week. You don't even need to you know, use it every day. Uh, a scrub, 
you know I noticed that when I go London central London my skin starts to feel real really oily my clogs my clogs my pores get clogged so I you know use a, a scrub to sort of remove the dirt off my face and then a moisturizer because your skin will be dry once you've finished using a scrub or a cleanser so a bit of moisturizer on your face to keep the skin glowing okay hopefully this video has helped you guys if it has you know what to do slam that like and subscribe down uh, button down below and also share with a friend as well that you feel this may help i'll catch your boys in the next one peace